Hi everyone, I am the last hodler, and as you probably know, I am one of the lead blockchain developers at a blockchain company called Online Blockchain uh, from the UK. And I just wanted to talk about how I became a blockchain developer and how you can become a blockchain developer too if it's something that you're interested in. Um, at first, it seems like something, and, and this happens a lot with programming in general, is that it seems really difficult to break in um, to any specific field that you might be interested in. And if you talk to a lot of developers, there's this kind of attitude going around that um, as a developer, you have to be the best developer in the whole world and you have to pretend to everybody else that um, you don't get afraid of, of certain code and, and that you um, know how to do everything straight away, which is just never really the case. There are, I mean, there are some developers out there that are just amazing and that can whip out um, anything you want in five minutes. But for the most of us, it takes a lot of dedication, it takes a lot of pulling your hair out, and it takes a lot of interest and engagement. So in my development journey, it started when I was 15 years old in high school. And I started with a really great language, which is C++. And C++ is a really good language that you need to learn if you want to become a blockchain developer, because it's the language that Bitcoin was written in. Um, and a lot of supporting software for Bitcoin, like Bitcoin QT, which is the main Bitcoin wallet, um, it was written in C++. So the language that you should be focusing on if you don't um, have a very strong programming background or you just want to get started at something like that, you should learn C++. Okay, It's one of the best things you can learn as a programmer because it will teach you all of the basics all of the close to the hardware stuff that you uh, would need to know, like dealing with memory, dealing with um, objects and things like that. You need to learn C++. That's a really important thing. So I started learning C++ and then I moved on to a language called C Sharp, um, which in certain ways is quite similar. Um, and I made games, made mobile apps, and I really developed and cultivated um, my programming practices as I grew through that journey. So as a developer, it's going to take you a long time to get good at writing software. And there's no avoiding that really. It takes a lot of hours of uh, playing around, picking things apart and putting things together. So one pathway that you might want to consider taking, which is the pathway that I took, is get a computer science degree. If you're young and uh, you've just finished high school or you're at the end of high school and you're thinking about what you want to do afterwards, if you want to get into technology and if you really want to get into the meat and potatoes of building software, building technology, but also technology focused um, projects, it's a really good idea to do computer science or a similar degree at university because they'll really stick you right into the code, right into the technology, and it forces you to learn those technologies by yourself. And, and um, programmers call it Google Foo. How good are you at Googling problems and getting the answer back that you want? So um, as a programmer, it's always a really good skill to have and a really good experience to have uh, being able to get into the technology yourself and learn it yourself and not have anyone hold your hand through it and that's a really uh, probably the most important thing you learn to do at university now university isn't the be all and end all if you're not interested in going to university that's fine and really one of the um, disadvantages of going to university is that you tend not to learn um, real world specific industry standard practices. So for example, you wouldn't learn um, per se a particular framework that you might use in the field, um, but you would learn the higher level, ab more abstract concepts that would be used as the, um, I guess the mantra of whatever the framework would be. So let me give you an example, right? You wouldn't learn a very specific library of C++. You wouldn't learn how to use it to create a very specific, let's say, interface, okay? You wouldn't learn Qt Creator, which is a C++ framework, but you would learn C++ and you would learn um, the paradigms associated with it. So um, it's absolutely not the be all and end all to, to go to university. And if you're not thinking of going to university, I wouldn't worry about it because the most important thing about becoming a good developer and a strong developer um, in new technologies like blockchain is the grit and determination to learn the stuff yourself. There's no magic trick. It's like uh, what they say about bodybuilding. You know, you can't, there's no one special trick to get abs. You just have to work and work and you will eventually get to the point where um, you've built up this foundation from nothing and you have this kind of toolkit, this skill set that you can look look into um, and use to create projects and solve problems and things like that. So to be more specific, if you're thinking of getting into blockchain and you want to create your own cryptocurrency, um, 
the first thing you need to do is you need to get excited about it, okay? You need to um, surround yourself with people who are also excited about it, who are gonna encourage you, and who are going to lend you their skills and teach you the things that they know, okay? You need to get familiar with open source, okay? What's open source? Well, open source is any project, but mainly, um, mainly programming, that is open for anybody to come in and take, adapt, mold into their own version. And it's a way that technology um, can grow and blossom and flourish in its own way in a community driven, I guess not for profit kind of way. No one's selling um, their software, no one's copywriting their software. It's all free to use, it's all free to modify and it's all free to distribute. So you need to get excited about open source software. And the best way to do that is to look into GitHub. Now what GitHub is, is a, a, a place for storing code but it's also a way for other programmers to take code, modify it in, in their little space, and then propose it back to the main repository. So say you have a big open source project um, and members of the community want to add to it, they will take that code into their own repository, modify it, do whatever they want to it, whatever they think will help, and then they propose that that be merged into the, um, the main GitHub branch, you might say, okay, so that way, Lots of different parties, lots of different people can come from different areas and work on one project together. The most famous, I guess you could say, open source project uh, would be Linux. So start discussions, start looking at forums, start figuring out where your mentors are going to be. Who are the developers that you look up to? What are the projects that you look up to? Okay, and you can literally email these guys and they'll reply. They'll be really excited about you emailing them because nobody emails them, okay? Um, when I started, my first cryptocurrency project, which was VeggieCoin, I got stuck on all kinds of problems as I was developing it um, because I was modifying the Bitcoin source code and I was taking it in a direction that um, wasn't in line with what Bitcoin was doing. So obviously there was a lot of extra code that I needed to write. It was a brand new technology to me and I literally emailed five or six of the Bitcoin core developers and one of them ended up consulting for me and helping me solve um, a couple of bugs, okay? And without that, it would have been a lot more difficult for the project to um, uh, succeed as easily as it did. So definitely figure out a few programmers or project leaders, they don't have to be programmers, but a few people that you can really look up to and get in touch with them, get talking to them, because I guarantee if they see that you're as excited as they are about cryptocurrency and blockchains, they will want to talk to you, they will want to mentor you. Everyone wants to mentor someone. So those are two really important things, okay? Another and really crucial thing is do not give up, okay? Programming and software and project development in general, it's a very difficult um, life cycle. Okay, to get from the beginning of a project to, to the point where you have a community that's flourishing, maybe it's profitable, people are, people are using your software. There are so many obstacles that are gonna be in your way that you're going to need to have the grit and determination to just keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And you don't have to do it alone. Okay, so this brings me to the next point. Join a startup. Okay, if you join a startup, it's gonna force you to gain more skills. Okay, if you join a startup, you're gonna be full stack. If, especially if it's a small startup, all right? You're not gonna have one specific job that you're comfortable in, you don't want that. You want to have lots of different responsibilities that are gonna force you to grow as a person. They're gonna force you to become, uh, have a better skill set and, and become a full stack uh, member of, of a team, okay? So that, that brings me to the next point. Okay, learn the basics first. If you wanna become a blockchain developer, read the entire Bitcoin developer reference from start to finish. Okay, that might sound really boring, Okay, and it is, it probably is in, in, in a lot of areas, okay? But you will learn so much if you just read through step by step, okay? And you don't have to, you don't have to pick through it with a fine tooth comb, but I guarantee you, if you start from the, the top and end up at the bottom, you will learn so much. So that would be my advice if you wanna get into blockchain and cryptocurrency development, okay? Remember to hodl for as long as possible.